Ati is an indigenous woman from Arauco, Colombia. She is a political scientist and co-founder of the Latin American Youth Climate Scholarship. This initiative assists 12 young people who will participate at COP28. Her work received wide critical, uh, critical acclaim and she is named one of the 100 most important women in Colombia in 2023, according to Forbes magazine. Welcome to Fixing the Future, Ati. The stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, and I really appreciate uh, that you are here to hear this important story. Uh, despite this amazing introduction about me, this uh, space is not about uh, me exactly. Uh, actually, uh, I'm going to talk about Magdalena Machaca Mendieta, and this session is, is going to be in Spanish, so I hope that you can understand. Uh, Magdalena Machaca Mendieta is an indigenous leader from Ayacucho in Peru with whom we have spent a couple of hours together. She is part of the Quispijaca indigenous people in this region of Peru. She is a Quechua woman, an agronomous engineer, and an expert in biodiversity. She is the co-founder of an organization called Bartolomé Aripallea, and she is here to speak about water nourishing, so to speak. I would like to ask you if you've heard about water seeding. Are you familiar with this concept? It's a little bit strange, but it seems it's not the case. Well, let's welcome Magdalena, who will tell us more about this concept. Thank you very much for being here. Thanks for inviting me to this part of the world. My name is Ms. Magdalena from the Ixpiyachcha indigenous community. And I would like to speak about water, water. In my community, we speak about Yakuyue, water, rainwater. We are indigenous peoples. We do not predate nature, we do not extract from nature, but we contribute to nature. So again, this organization has a 30 years experience. It was funded by young people back then from a university in Sierra del Perú. We consider ourselves as a Andine Positive Cultural Affirmation Group. Our experience responds to global challenges such as the increase of global temperature and the reduction of rainfall. Rainfall back in the 80s or the 90s were at 1,200 or 1,400 milliliters a year, whereas today we have experienced a reduction of between 40 and 60 percent of rainfall. So we add more or less 500 milliliters a year. Also, temperatures have increased. My village is 2,700 meters on top of sea level, so temperature is today on average 24, 26 degrees Celsius, which is unprecedented. So again, water breathing. We like this concept, water breathing, as we said at the beginning. We need to breathe water. And this means identifying natural depressions like this one in the picture, which in our mountain, well, after the rain season, there's no water left. This practice has been now adopted as a public policy in my country, but it's been also used in Costa Rica in order to deal with 
water scarcity, especially in a province called Wanakaste. During the pandemic, we supported our brothers from this part of the world, from Costa Rica, by supporting them to breed water. And now they are using it as a public policy in Costa Rica and Guatemala. So again, water breathing. How do we do that? Well, in an organized way, boys, girls, women, men, we identify the place where we can build these water reservoirs in order to allow it to store water through two mechanisms. Superficial water, so we store water during the water season and let's say that whenever there is a natural reservoir this contributes to increasing the volume of water. The main contribution is that we contribute to increasing the capacity of aquifers by six or six, five or six times. We have natural pathways like this one with an entry point. Now we cover the entry point with the stone, ashes, natural resources from the area. We have digged reservoirs of up to seven meters depth and of course we need to open a debate with nature. The contribution of this practice is that it has nothing to do with the technical approach, right? We want to open a debate, a discussion with nature. We want to develop an empathic relationship between mankind, humankind and nature in our uh, part of the world. Now, this water, this rainwater, In the case of Ayacucho, we have been able to solve the problem of water scarcity thanks to this natural technique of water storage, water breathing. As you can see in this picture, we work all together, the community, authorities, teachers, students. These are lagoons, as you can see in the picture, we again need to avoid water leaking down. So in summary, this practice is essentially about doing what we call a natural, a natural debate process. We need to first ask nature if it allows us to build this lagoon, because if we impose our will, a thousand problems can arise. We are, as I said before, in the top of mountains. There's nothing behind us. Our community is in the land between Pampas and Catch. After us, there's nobody else. So if there's an accident, it will affect us directly. And this is why we need to engage in a debate with nature. We want nature to give us a well-informed consent in order to avoid any natural disaster. So we have the dry area in the bottom side of the screen. And then once the lagoon is built, one would say, oh, done, perfect. No, the added value of the Quechua culture is to make sure that these lagoons stay in the long run, that are reinforced, reinvigorated, given natural energy so that the water is not stagnant, but rather alive. We want water to be alive. We want water to engage in a dialogue with us. And we believe this to be the added value of the Quechua culture. The scarcity of water is the result of climate change. We want to contribute to fighting climate change by engaging, re-engaging in a dialogue with nature. For example, children and young people perform rituals and they also transport an algae that will allow the lagoon to recover life, to regain life. This is in Kantuyachi, making the lagoon sacred. And 
in the down flow we plant mm, plants because of course also plants have mothers so we like developing a community of plants like this one that you can see in the picture this one is called Ayahuicho water has an other relatives that live with it the water goddesses like the Matawai and the San Hantui so these are the ways to ensure that water regains life we have dry areas and then lagoons of different sizes and forms but what matters to us is to ensure that water can keep the vi vital energy because energy is not limited to humankind but also water hosts energy this is the dry area the natural basin which is not receiving water mainly because it has been taken its energy away and this is why we need to recover this energy so we promote a training a training for boys and girls and in a period of a few years the lagoon pops up again again it's all about having a genuine debate with pachamama with mother nature but even more importantly with water and its spirit then there's this infinity of lagoons that contribute to the local community that builds up but also to other communities other communities can benefit Ayacucho with more than 250,000 citizens can benefit from the water that flows down from our lagoons thanks to the interconnections to the underground interconnections more than 1000 liters flow down which is remarkable and this is the great contribution of this tiny intervention which is about covering again this hole and engaging with water as if it were alive because from our approach it is alive for us for the quechua peoples there are sacred moments at the beginning of the summer at the end of the of september but also in september and august we are not interested in the size of lagoons there are large lagoons very tiny ones this is not important none of them is to be undermined none of them are fed by existing natural sources all this water is rain water many people say oh it's stagnated no water calls water when you have surface water over the time it gets in touch with underground waters we're lucky enough to be on top of a large aquifer that benefits our department our region the Avankai region so when this superficial or groundwater gets in touch with underground water there's an interconnection and this water is not lost anymore this year in Peru many lagoons many natural lagoons dried out the Titicaca lake has dried did these lagoons dry no they didn't because they have this engagement this interaction this spirit with underground deep waters To build these lagoons, we have, of course, a technical file. We design the lagoons beforehand, but also we engage with wise men and women. We look for natural consent. This is what we focus on. 
We are experiencing a diffi difficult period in the world, right? We are undergoing an unforeseen crisis that was never experienced by our ancestors. How are we going to overcome this crisis? We're speaking about the future here. Again, this is the future going back to the community, going back to a relationship with nature, and even more important, going back to what is sacred, because the basis of modernity is precisely on these three pillars, right? Denaturalization, decommunization, and desacralization. Not to speak about the importance of allowing children to participate, to bring them to participate. Professionals of all fields, doctors, psychologists, we are all called to regenerating the world, to contributing to regenerating the world. Life, the planet, the planet that puts human existence at stake. Reengaging with water, respecting water, because water hosts knowledge. And you might think that I'm speaking nonsense. Even when it comes to this intercultural dialogue, dialogue waterfalls will help you learning, reading, and this is not in educational curricula, even less so in universities, because we are, it's all about rationality in the modern world. So nature has to be seen. Nature is seen only as a source of resources, water. We want water because we have very, we, our approach is very utilitarian. What about the passion that water hosts? Water has wishes and we have undermined water's wishes. It's about giving water back its humanity. It's about giving the mother seed its humanity back. Today, if a hailstorm was to take place, thanks to this sacred moment, we can divert the hailstorm to another area. All this is not put into value. The drought we experienced last year was solved thanks to our re-engagement with the youth. So the vital force that women host is not used because there is, of course, a clear adult centrism approach. Here in Spain, San Ramon, we need to engage in a dialogue with saints, we need to coexist with <laughs> saints, to thank the fruit of Pachamama and pay tribute to it in churches. In the Quechua culture, in the Andine Amazonian culture, we incorporate all elements with no discrimination. We give life to all elements. This is what the whole thing is about. Today, more than ever, we need to get closer and closer to, the in, to all indigenous peoples, to those peoples who happily keep alive the relationship with nature, this very rich culture, the local water management culture, such as not allowing children to pee on in lagoons, and they ask why? Is it because you're dirtying it? No, because water is, I mean, it's the world is not only about humans, there are also souls when you pee on water, 
It means that souls will not be able to transit this water. We need to engage in a dialogue with water. We need to thank water. We need to dance and sing to water. And of course, there are very diverse forms of water. The bako, the shy water. There is a wide diversity of water. Water is not, it's not only H2O. Water has taste, flavor. In, in August, the first we try water and it's tasty, it means it's going to be a great year. You know, this is our culture. When there is a drought, a girl will have to be married and the water will then know that it has to nourish us as, as we nourish it. When there is a rainfall, it means that water is ill and we need to heal it. Water hosts an infinity of knowledge. I am here not to bring this experience, but also to soften hearts towards our Pachamama. This is what happens when we do not believe this is in the south of Peru. No water, animals are dying. And what's the problem here? Mining companies extracting resources. Thanks a million. And thanks to Terbizum and Dashen for their support. Bueno, yo creo que eh es verdad. Wow, listening to such a statement at the closing of the festival is going through a great deal of emotions. We've heard about this joint problem. This is why we have decided to be part of this festival. And it's incredible to listen the perspective of an indigenous community, a solution grounded on an indigenous cosmovision. Again, this is very important, the perspective of the community, of the Quechua community, And combining science with indigenous knowledge, this project has been <coughs> very interesting in combining both approaches. So I would like to go back to congratulating the members of this project. This is part of the hope, right? That things will be possible in the mid and the long run. I invite you to give these people a round of applause. Bueno, muchísimas gracias por eso. Y eh, vamos a reproducir un video porque creo que... We're going to screen a clip because an image is worth a million words. La, el conversatorio que vamos a tener en adelante. Entonces, corre el video, por favor. En Ayacucho, desde hace más de 30 años, en la comunidad de Quispiachta, venimos construyendo lagunas de agua de lluvia en vasos naturales. Para nosotras, el agua es una persona, es madre que nos cría, y nosotros como buenos hijos, hijas... Y... So, as siblings, we live to breathe water. In Ayacucho, desde in Ayacucho, for more than 30 years, in the Expierta community, community, we've been building lagoons. For us, water is like a human, a, a mother that nourishes us. And us, as sons and daughters and brothers and sisters, we need to also breathe water. We have brought water where there was drought. 
Before starting the lagoons, we need to ask for the consent of the Tekawa mummies through rituals by singing and dancing for the water under Pachamama. In order to stabilize the lagoons, we plant mother plants, water mother plants, different ones, to avoid the lagoons to dry out. And thanks to this, we have Chipatajerta, a land that inspires life, produces water, clean water, where the ground is always humid and we can have better income. The water stemming down have produced magic places like this one. Thanks to the traditional knowledge, we can all contribute to having water. We are water breathers more than water users. It's a legacy of our ancestors, not only to have quality water, but also to save the planet. Bueno, eh, eso es parte también como para. So again. Magdalena and I were discussing this morning when I shared my impressions with you and we said that our indigenous communities, Colombia, Peru, the problem we experience is that many of these practices are based on a cosmogonic vision with sacred fathers present in our practices. And I would like to ask you, how was it for you this challenge to combine traditional practices in the process of recovery and breathing of water. When at the beginning of the 90s, my sister Marcela and I went back to the community, the community raised the problem of water scarcity. They wanted to pump water from the Pampas River, which is very high up in the mountains. It was impossible. This is a rational approach, right? An immediate approach. Humankind is very much oriented towards immediate results. And again, this is the window of opportunity. There's another way to approach things from the and in Cosmovision, there is a different way to be in the world, to live, to inhabit the world. In this immediate response based on pumping water up, our cosmic vision would be undermined. Water has to be perceived as a living creature, as a human person with its own features, as a woman or as a frog or as a snake. This is what underlying the cosmic vision is about and putting the cosmic vision at the center, as Quechua people say, we have two feet, great. 
we are now professionals. I have to be anchored in my culture in order to be able to walk forward. At the same time, I'm an engineer and I need to be able to work from a more rational perspective, but I want to be grounded within my cosmovision. I want to see things in a horizontal way. As a man, as a woman, as a professional, I need to combine my different experiences. There's something which is extremely valuable, which is that for many indigenous communities, well, you know, you receive foreign technicians, experts, and for them, the mm, divine element is so strange that they do not include them in their assessment impact in the in their impact assessments yeah they even consider it to be old fashioned as a sign of underdevelopment and they say for your community to move forward you need to leave aside your beliefs you need to leave them behind you need to overcome your culture this is what they say when in fact it's the other way around we need to put our alive cosmovision in the center in children also so that boys girls will think it a thousand times before killing or before committing a crime And this is what happens when you are rooted in your cosmovision. I would like to share an element here with the audience to give you an example. Once I was part of a sun energy, solar energy project, the largest one in Latin America, including indigenous peoples to produce solar energies. And we were at the UN headquarters in New York. I was acting as a translator and there was a question about the impact of the project on the community they said some someone said the project has been so much assessed that we have carried out a spiritual assessment and people laughed at it right the people from the UN in New York laughed and they were like no no it's for true the document has a hundred pages and we have assessed what is the spiritual impact of the installation of these solar panels in the strategic region which can have a very direct impact in the community of course and not only the community because the community the original indigenous community considers that the well-being of mankind is not more important than the feelings of other elements this is the only way to ensure the good life. We have a hundred lagoons, two hundred lagoons. It doesn't matter how many we have. What matters is how feel the water, how well the water feels. And what do we mean by that? We need water to be happy where it is. My water, the water that we have created is happy, is having a good life. Then we can look beyond the situation here and now, right? And this is what our spirituality is focused on. So when you approach the lagoon, the lagoon will answer you. The nature will engage in a dialogue with you. And then it will start bubbling. It will be shiny. Birbiri Afghan, as we say, it's not stagnated. It's colorful, it's transparent, it flows. This is not considered by engineers. We have to say engineers. Do not let channels to be emptied because they want to clean the channels every now and then. We tell them, careful, because if you take this stone out, water will not flow down happily. And they go, no, but the stone is making the water flow difficult. Don't take the ohoruro out, we keep telling engineers. Ohoruro is a plant that helps water purifying. Because again, 
as nature water also can be polluted by the feces of animals so where there's a horudo it means that water needs purification it means that water needs to be purified and if you take the plant out it will be impossible to allow water to regenerate the berus also helps water regenerating everything is where it is for some reason from a rational technical approach this would not be considered but it has to be considered this is what the good life is about right this is what the spiritual impact assessment is about otherwise what's the point of being in a territory that inspires you to want to have a good life everything is embedded with energy with a healthy energy and this is what we use as an indicator of good health thank you i have like a million questions to ask you but i would like to hand it over to the audience unfortunately we have very little time but if you have any questions please go ahead because of course one of the aims of the debate here is to allow you to ask as many questions as you wish thank you Muchas gracias, Mag Thank you very much, Magdalena, for your presentation. It's been really, really inspiring. So first of all, thank you very much. And my question has to do with the following. How can we help you raise your voice? How can we help you ensure that your wisdom, your experiences is valued? and leveraged and contributes to helping the planet out of this mess well the way you are helping us allowing us to share our experiences because at the beginning the process i mean our experience were were oftentimes mm, ridiculized the answer i oftentimes got is no you don't breathe water you manage water so from that time to present many people have changed their mindset many skepticals are also water breathers and this is the good point right how have we managed to get here through an invisible voice that was never taken into account we've done so by sharing sharing and sharing my organization has sent me to share with you here because out of the hundred of you here in the room one or two will say hey yeah i'm gonna be living this woman there are other ways to live in the world and these other ways to live in the world need to blossom anywhere in our Planet, thank you very much for your willingness to help. Thanks. <clears throat> so we only have three minutes left. I think there's time for one last question. Don't keep it for you. Hello and good afternoon. Thank you very much. I would like to thank you for being here. I'm from Peru. It's been now three years that I live in Barcelona. I work in the field of smart cities and technology, which is very prevalent. Thanks for bringing Peru all the way to Barcelona. You know, after three years living in Barcelona and after getting to know so many different cities in Europe, let me assure you that it doesn't matter how many technologies we use, no matter how 
many innovations we introduce, no matter how much we grow financially, there is a clear lack of understanding and empathy with nature. So thanks, thanks for raising the topic. This will be paramount in order to overcome the crisis we are under, we're going through. Bueno, muchísimas gracias. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time and thanks to Fixing the Future for organizing this forum. This is a way also to come up with solutions. Thanks for having invited us to share our views and to allow us to, you know, raise awareness about what's going on in the countries under the leadership of indigenous peoples. Very valuable experiences worth socializing and replicating. So these are my closing remarks. Would you like to close? Yeah, I would like to thank the organizers of the fixing and I would like to thank every one of you for listening to me. And once again, let me leave one take home message. Engage in a dialogue with nature. The nature never shut up, but we don't listen to it anymore. And the future is re-engaging in a dialogue with nature. It doesn't matter if what nature does is worth for mankind or not. We sometimes believe that building a water reservoir or launching a mega project is the only thing that matters. But now we need to put indigenous communities at the heart because even some communities start thinking that their actions are pointless. No, no. We need to re-engage in this dialogue with nature. A lot of wisdom is being lost, a lot of knowledge is being lost. So we need to regain strength and start working like my community does in my community to bring water up to the mountains. As it was said already 30 years ago, they wanted to pump the, rea the, river, the, the river water up. But of course it's impossible to overcome a distance of 2,000 meters. We would need resources and technology. Whereas building a lagoon costs less than 100,000 soles, not even 10,000 euro. Each, the tiny lagoons cost nothing, 5,000 soles, less than 1,000 euro. Imagine with the millions and millions that a dam would cost, we could build a thousand lagoons, easy, and sometimes, you know, corruption, the moral superiority of experts and decision makers becomes a barrier, even if in, Pel in Peru we are now part of the decision-making processes. Nonetheless, many people are still skeptical. Once again, thanks, thanks a lot, and I hope Pachamama takes care of you. Wow. Muchísimas gracias a ti, Magdalena.